Lesson 2.8 is on the properties of transformations. So we've been dealing with transformations this whole topic, right? This whole module. And the four types of transformations we were concerned with, translations, reflections, rotations, dilations. Okay, so now what happens when we do those things? What happens when we perform a transformation? What happens when we reflect it or dilate it? And that's where we're going to get into the ideas of congruency and similarity. So it says, if a transformation produces an image, remember we have the pre-image and the image, with the same shape and size as the pre-image, the figures are congruent. And I think you've heard this word before. I think I've used it. Congruent, okay? It's the geometry word for equal, same, right? In algebra, we say equal because it has a value. X equals five. In geometry, we say congruent because they don't necessarily have a, like a value assigned to it, but we're saying a shape, a segment is exactly the same. So we say they're congruent. Now, the symbol for congruency, so when you're talking about two figures being equal, being congruent, you write an equal sign, and then you put a little squiggly line over the top, right? That is how we say things are congruent. So we can write a congruency statement. It's like a really big fancy word here, basically for just saying things are equal. Congruency statement, okay? Look at these two um, triangles right here. This is probably just a translation, right? It looks like the A slid over to A prime, B slid to B prime, C slid to C prime, right? So we perform this translation. They stayed the same shape. They're both triangles. They stayed the same size. Think they bigger or smaller, okay? So when you say this congruency statement, it's kind of important how you write it, okay? I can't just go A, B, C, B, A. Like, you can't do that. No. All right, so sorry, don't write that last three part there down, okay? And the reason you can't do that is because this A right here, when you write that triangle ABC is congruent to the next one, you have to match them up in order. So A goes to A prime, make sure you're leaving space here. B goes to B prime, and C goes to C prime, which should hopefully make sense, except sometimes you're going to be doing these where ABC is congruent to DEF. All right, now to make a statement, we have to have the equal sign or the congruent sign. So we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, so congruent means exactly the same. Then we have similarity. Okay, so if things are similar, right, they look a lot alike. Okay, a lot of times people, you know, you might look similar to your brother or similar to your father or mother or whatever, right? So similarities, they have some things the same, but it's not everything. So a transformation produces an image with a, or with proportional sides. With proportional sides and, remember, with things that are similar, some things are the same, some things aren't quite the same. Well, proportional means they're that ratio, okay? So if you're thinking about feeling like a um, scale factor, right? Everything's increasing by the same scale factor. You're multiplying by 1.5. You're multiplying by, you know, one half, something like that. But the angles are congruent. Think about it. I'm just gonna, well, I will use these, well, we'll use these triangles, right? Notice these two triangles. Here's my image, right? This triangle got bigger. But the angles didn't change because remember, if you add up all three angles in a triangle, they have to add to 180 degrees. So because this triangle is getting bigger, it doesn't mean the angles are getting bigger because if they all got bigger, they wouldn't add to 180 and then it's not going to be a triangle. So congruent angles, proportional sides, meaning they're all being multiplied by the same number, but the angles are going to stay exactly the same. Okay. And the figure, so the figures are similar. Same shape but not the same size. Now the symbol for similarity is close to the symbol for congruent. So remember congruent is this like squiggly line, tilde, whatever it is, over an equal sign. Similarity, it's not equal, right? 
So it's just that little squiggly line. I think it's called a tilde on the keyboard. All right, so a similarity statement. Okay, so now we're going to say that these two triangles are similar to each other. You still have to match them up, okay? A, leave a space, has to go with A prime. B is going to match up to B prime. And C is going to match up to C prime. This is important because if you were to say C prime, B prime, A prime, you're saying that A goes with C instead of A, right? This is how we know what corresponds to each other. But in between them, similar sign, okay? So you don't need these three. I just want you to know that, that they correspond to each other. All right, so if you think of it, I told you we had four types of transformations that we're dealing with. Which ones are congruent? Well, translation. Or reflection, okay? Because in a translation, in a reflection, they're staying the same shape and size, okay? It doesn't matter what their orientation is, but they're the exact same. And a ro rotation, even if you rotate it, it's not getting any bigger or any smaller. Okay, they're congruent. What transformation is where the sides are proportional, meaning they're getting bigger or smaller? Well, that is a dilation. And what we're going to work on too is we're going to work on, you can combine some of these things. You can perform more than one transformation on an object. You can mix things up. But congruencies are translation, reflection, rotation. They're not getting any bigger. They're not getting any smaller. Okay, again, like on a standardized test, you know, I might say length AB is five centimeters and it's rotated 90 degrees. What is the new length? You don't have to figure things out. You don't have to draw a new picture. If it's rotated, then it's congruent. So A prime, B prime would be also five centimeters. All right, so let's look at some examples here. This one says describe the transformation shown. Okay. Well, if I look at it, it could be a translation, but if I translated A all the way over to A prime, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or something. Sorry if I didn't count it right. I didn't translate C over that many times. So it's not a translation. It's not turn at all. It's not a rotation. It's a reflection. Okay? So we know this is a reflection. Problem? Reflection isn't good enough. With a reflection, you need a line of reflection. So we're going to say that this is a reflection over what? What did we reflect it over? Well, we reflected it over this line right here. So what is that line? So it's a reflection over the y-axis. Sorry, this is very sloppy today. It usually is, though. So it's reflection over the y-axis. All right, so what do you notice about corresponding side lengths and angles? Reflection. What's going to say true about the corresponding um, sides and angles? Well, they're congruent, right? The figures are congruent. They're going to stay the same. Okay, so we'll say the sides and angles. are congruent. Okay. The same. Write a similarity or a congruent statement. Well, this is going to be a congruent statement, right? Because we said they're congruent. So A, B, C is congruent, squiggly line with an equal sign, to A prime. You can't just say A, A, and then C, B. No. A prime, B prime, C prime. Because Angle A and angle A prime are the same angle. They correspond to one another. All right? So that's all a congruency statement is. A lot of times people think that's a lot more complicated. It's not. All right, so now what about this transformation? Well, we have triangle ABC and A prime B prime C prime, right? They're not the same shape and size. So this is a dilation. All right. Now, with reflection, we have to have a line of reflection. With a rotation, we have to have the number of degrees, right? The angle of rotation or the number of degrees. 
With a translation, we need that like where it's going. Okay, so it's not just good enough to say reflection, rotation, translation, dilation. You got to say then what? It's being dilated by what? So remember, um, we can figure out this dilation here by just taking the distance from A prime, well, I'm going to say C prime because this is the horizontal line over our image, over our original. Okay, and I'm not going to pick the sides because I want to be able to count them. So A prime to C prime is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. A to C is just 1, 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So my scale factor is 3. So it's a dilation by A scale factor of 3. So what do we notice about the corresponding side lengths? The sides are proportional. They're not the same, but they're all being, they're all, all three of them are being um, multiplied by three. We don't multiply some by three and some by four. Okay, that's why it's a dilation. So they're all proportional, the sides are. What about the angles? Remember, the angles are congruent. If this is a triangle, the angles are not getting any bigger or any smaller. So we say the angles are congruent. Okay, so sides are proportional or sides are being multiplied by three. The angles are congruent, the angles are equal. So in this case, we're gonna write a similarity statement because these two figures are similar. So same thing, A, B, C is similar to A prime, B prime, C prime, okay? We're still working with the same transformations we've been working with, but now we're gonna be specific, okay? If we're gonna talk about a reflection, we need a line of reflection, a rotation, we need the angle of rotation, um, translation, we need what direction, up or down, left or right, that it's going, and a um, dilation, we're gonna need by what's, or we're gonna need what the scale factor is.